case, mm-hmm. and um, or whole woman's health, I guess they call it. And uh, the Supreme Court at that time, as constructed at that time, after uh, Scalia had had um, ni- uh, you know uh, appreciately uh, left us, very 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 considerately left us at a uh, at a very nice time. Um, they uh, five to three. Kennedy voted mm-hmm. with the um, the uh, those you know liberals on the court, and that trap law, which infringed upon a woman's right to an abortion, was rejected. This is the exact same law. Right. If the Supreme Court decides not to take up this case, which has been, in my mind, purposefully um, mis you know mishandled by the the Fifth Circuit, right? They've gone directly against Supreme Court precedent. Um, then that is the law of the land within the region that is governed by the yes. Fifth Circuit. And then we're going right. to see that in about three or four other circuits around the country. And it, it, it could be a matter of, you know, months, maybe a year when the Republican legislatures pass these laws and abortion will be effectively outlawed in yeah. half a dozen, dozen states. Uh, and so, you know, we don't even need to see Roe v. Wade overturned directly uh, for this type of outcome. I and mean, we've seen hints of this, but this would be uh, on a bigger scale. Right. Right. And th- I mean, and this this speaks to the the the, uh, the longevity. Drop my phone there for a second. <laughs> the longevity of our problems that we're facing. I mean, the Trump, um, the last I checked, I think I checked earlier this week, 85 appointments, including two to the Supreme Co- Supreme Court. I mean, he these are lifetime appointments. And. You know, what is our strategy to recuperate from this uh, as progressives, as people of the, on the left? Um, I get the feeling that we are we're still, you know, the taste in our mouth, the taste of blood from the 2016 primaries is still in our mouths. And and um, and, and I think we really rather focus on that fight, I guess, as a way of coping or distracting ourselves away from what's really ahead of us over the next generation. Yeah. Well, it's easier, right? Um... Yeah. Well, and let's that's a good um, sell out. That's a, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Enjoy your neoliberal uh, whatever the neoliberal <laughs> shill sell out. Um, exactly. Uh, speaking of which, let's play Cory Booker's um, oh, uh, boy. Uh, video. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's a well done video. Like I like the it starts with a, uh, a drum. Universal love. huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Let's let's just play let's play a little bit of like the I can't watch the whole thing again, but uh, let's let's Some play of us haven't a watched little this bit. Yet, Sam, can we do the whole? Have thing? Have you not? I have not. This is all I wanted to wait to have a real live reaction to it. All right, we're just going to oh, play. Man, the I'm first, already nauseous. We'll point. play the first twenty. I'll tell you what. We'll play the first twenty seconds and then the last twenty seconds, and then maybe we'll play more of it when when Virgil uh, sits down with us. Uh, but here here it is. One drum. In America, we have a common pain, but what we're lacking is a sense of common purpose. Fuck yeah. What's up? Amen. I grew up knowing that the only way we can make change is when people come together. When I was a baby, my parents tried to move us into a neighborhood with great public schools, but realtors wouldn't sell us a home because of the color of our skin. A group of white lawyers who had watched the courage of civil rights activists were inspired to help black families in their own community, including mine. And they changed the course of my entire life. Because in America, courage is contagious. My dad told me, boy, Pause never it for one second. Now, so we're left hanging. I don't, know, sac- uh, I don't know Cory Booker's story enough to know what those white lawyers did. Yeah. It helped his, his uh, family move into a, a suburb. Oh, did they do that? I believe that's the story. I want. Where's the? I mean, I'm not even. It's a cheap shot, maybe, but like, where's a picture of him with Shmuley Botaic when he's talking about like housing discrimination? <laughs> it's like no housing discrimination here, but home bulldozing there. Um, uh, it's a little bit early to to roll that out in your intro. No, I, uh, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm <laughs> you know, but Botaic always makes an early appearance. But but let's go now. Now fast forward to uh, like you know the last twenty seconds because that's when the music really starts to swell. There's more drummers now, and go ahead. There's more drum. Instead of shuffling more children into cages and coffins, 
where we see the faces of our leaders on television and feel pride, not shame. It is not a matter of can we. It's a matter of do we have the collective will, the American will. I believe we do. Together, we will channel our common pain back into our common purpose. Together, America, we will rise. So I'm Cory Booker, and I'm okay. running for president of the United States of <laughs> yeah, America. Yeah, we know. I, you know, now part of it is like, look, I, I have spent uh, a decent amount over the past 30, 25 years uh, doing voiceovers. And uh, in one form or another, and I can't help but see him in the studio when exactly, he's right. <laughs> hitting every point. And uh, the the poetry slam uh, that he went to 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 get the cadence like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And I am <laughs> Sam Cedar saying that. And now, but most people won't have that problem. And I know that's sort of petty response to it, but yeah. Um, Kamala Harris had a uh, had her her big speech twenty thousand people that's pretty impressive. Booker has this it shows some polish, um, but both of these two candidates are running on sort of like um, pretty general stuff. Now Kamala Harris mm-hmm. uh, f- um, followed it up with a, a town hall on CNN where she came out very forcefully for Medicare for all. And then the next day, sort of, well, not so much, you know, you know. <laughs> a little less forceful. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I don't know. What's, uh, what's, what's your sense? Okay. Okay. So this is, this is my line uh, throughout the entire primaries. I don't like anybody. Um, <laughs> the, all of them are going to have like, e- as much as I like Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders, if he runs like, which we all assume he is, um, he's got some issues that I just do not like about him, but you know, he just came out against BDS unnecessarily. So he could have made his point without even prefacing it with that. He, you know, he has a couple of blind spots. Um, but I only bring that up to say that I don't like any of them, but whoever wins this primary, I'm going to love that person put on their t-shirt. I'm going to go door to door. You can call me a neoliberal shill and you can thank me later when we're not hemorrhaging even more judicial appointments and even more Supreme court picks. So, you know, I, I can, I can, easily jump on on board with like how much i really really dislike cory booker i think i got a video out there called uh cory booker is trash feel free to go give me some clicks uh because i explained in great detail um how inauthentic he is right uh phony um but man i will eat my socks and my words if he gets this nomination i'm going to put on a cory booker t-shirt and i'm going to go door door and i'm going to talk with the same cadence and tenor it might you know and say you need to go it's almost like a jim kirk you like you really need to go vote for cory booker but um but you know that's that's my take man I, i'm not in love with any of these candidates and i think it's important for us realistically to not approach this like one of them was our boyfriend or our girlfriend like we don't have to defend their honor we just need to you know let's let's fight out these primaries see who has the best policies realistically who has the best ground game because that's what's going to matter the most and um, and then when it's all said and done, you know, let's 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 get this madman out of the White House. I've been in a committed relationship with Bernie since 2016. Good. But I, I, I w- do you think, though, when you look at this video, just like he's not as good in my estimation, a performer as Kamala Harris. And <laughs> he's also doing what like, you know. He's, Obama did it better tra- to be blunt. He's so running for is, vice president. R- okay, that's, that's I, I want to see what the logic is. There okay. is I half of that. the people, but we'll, you know, we'll, 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 well, we'll get to more I of this. I found but. it very revealing because insofar as the only actual uh, policy thing or the only specific thing he talked about in there is like, oh, my family, we had the money to buy a house, but they wouldn't sell it to us because of the color of our skin. And that's a problem that he can help you with. If you don't have the money to buy a house... Mm, he's probably out of ideas. And that's what it means to be a neoliberal. To to be fair, he did expand affordable housing in Newark. Now, there was also a lot of things that he did that were not uh, uh, particularly good that he did in Newark. Uh, But fortunately for him, Newark was, was, uh, I mean, it remains uh, an incredibly um, uh, poor and sort of uh, 
debilitated city. But governed now respects. by a progressive education activist who ran explicitly on recruiting all of Booker's work. Yep. There. And yeah. Uh, yeah. and fortunately for Booker, when when he came on the scene there, it was a disaster. Like <laughs> as about as disastrous as it could be. But yeah, I think your uh your your perspective on this is uh is an interesting one. I guess I guess I have one question for you in terms of Kamala Harris, which it, yeah. it, you know, this came up it seems to me that um the there's gonna be an opportunity for candidates like her to avoid dealing with going too deep into the specifics of policies. Like, look, she came out and was forceful in saying no private insurers and then had to back off that a day yeah. later. That, to me, suggests that her relationship to that issue was not necessarily as deep as she wanted to communicate. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, but I think when you have 20 people in a race, you can maintain that. Like, you, you know, you can hide quite a bit yeah. and yeah. the one area where i think that she is not going to be able to hide and I, I and um i'm curious as to your perspective on this is her um, record. her record as a prosecutor and i you yeah. know i am not uh, against all prosecutors i think right uh you could be a very good prosecutor and healthy like i was hoping zephyr teach out would be one mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but uh the question to me is, in my mind, is will the Black Lives Matter folks who are best situated to uh, address this at least first, right, with Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. uh, the people who have worked in judicial in, in uh, criminal justice reform, um, you know, across the board, they are best situated to address this first to Kamala Harris. My question is, are, are they going to do it? Yeah, it you know it it really depends. So so, I mean, if I'm going to answer this question honestly, it might open up a can of worms here. So, uh, the the honest answer is they probably will, and and more than happily do it because of her clear and abysmal record, uh, you know, targeting truancy and and you know with policies that disproportionately affect. Uh, people of color because they disproportionately affect affect uh, uh, po impoverished communities, um, and so it's it's really a slam dunk, and and it's already happening, right? So let, let's let's be clear, like there are plenty of voices uh, who are not like of, officially affiliated with Black Lives Matter who are speaking out because of just their personal opinion with regard to Kamala and her and her track record, and 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 more importantly, her uh, her attempt to spin herself to be a progressive. Um, a prosecutor, which she was not. Um, so it's already happening. It's going to continue to happen. But where, where where it gets complicated is is if there is this expectation that they have to do it for one, because then they'll you know I, I mean realistically be like I, well no I don't have to do it you know if I feel like doing it I will and is, is that petty yeah but it's also a dynamic that you have to keep in mind like you know it. If the expectation is for Black Lives Matter to save you all from Kamala Harris, then then that's not going to that's not going to resonate really well with with us. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just I just use that kind of like categorically. I'm not even affiliated with Black Lives Matter, to be sure. But um, but but but, you know, just just keep that in mind that people are doing it individually. But, um, you know, everybody pitch in. And, and if you really dislike Kamala as much as um, you probably should, um, let's just uh, just keep putting. Keep repeat, repeating her videos over and over again. I think they speak for themselves. Yeah, I think so. And I think I think once that one, once that uh, wall is breached, right? Once yeah. there, she is put on the defensive for her pros her record as a prosecutor. Then you're going to start to see the people who are coming in saying like, and here's who you didn't prosecute. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's because that's going to open up a whole nother uh, group of folks, because uh, if she gets lumped in with Booker as a friend of big finance, yeah. uh, that yeah. is going to set up. That's ultimately going to be the um, the dividing line. But um, we shall see. And we're going to talk more about this uh, with Virgil, uh, Texas, in a minute. But, um, uh, Ben, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Oh man, we didn't get to slam slam dunk on Howard Schultz, but oh, uh, uh, let's. But I'm willing to do there. that no, too. Uh, <laughs> no, we don't have to. We, you, okay. you know, no, let him let him get a, let him get a hack at Howard Schultz. Yeah, I mean, please. That's almost like being rude to a guest. I I agree. Uh, it's like, well, you know, I've already. I think I've done it. Like, it, just just by being able to bring it up, Sam, I really appreciate it. If there's anybody in this race that I 
honestly would fight tooth and nail and scorch the earth with, it's got to be the guy who's willing to invest billions of dollars of his own money to make.